Stop. Okay. Stop. 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 Hey friends, Sam Benton here. Welcome to the channel. GTA Online is coming out with bottom dollar bounties on June 25th. I had some crazy experiences with bounty hunters as a police officer. And when someone suggested it to me, I knew I had to check it out. So let's take a look right now. Jeanette Eccles, junior assistant bounty hunter at your service and chopping at the bit. Oh, great. First of all, for those of you that don't know, let me explain how bounty hunters work. When someone gets arrested, they don't always sit in jail till their court date. They get to go free. If they're able to pay a certain amount of money to the court system, which they will get back if they show up to court. However, most people don't have all that money up front. Bail is usually set at at least several thousand dollars. So they hire a bail bondsman who does have the money to pay the bail. The defendant in turn pays them usually a 10% fee of the bond, which is non-refundable. If they do not show up to court, the bail bondsman has to pay the full bond to the court system. So they will hire a bounty hunter. Hi. Hi. We need a visit. Oh. 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 You're under arrest. Oh. 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 Yeah! Take us both up at the same time. Where's my daughter going? Welfare, social services, crackhead. A bounty hunter is paid usually 10 to 25% of the bond. When the defendant is apprehended, the bail bondsman pays the bounty hunter, and they don't have to pay the entire bail amount to the court. Bounty hunters are not government agencies. They are private companies. So they are not held to the standards of the Fourth Amendment as law enforcement officers would be. In plain English, they're allowed to do sketchy stuff. Sketchy stuff that cops can't. I know cops don't always have the best reputation, especially here in the United States. But believe me, bounty hunters are worse. They don't have an internal affairs. They don't wear body cameras. They don't even need a warrant to arrest you. The list goes on and on. Anyway, police are allowed to help bounty hunters and vice versa. But I know from experience, whenever a bounty hunter got involved, things got ugly. Licensing and training can be pretty limited for these guys. Or girls in this case. Every time a bounty hunter requested police assistance, a supervisor was required to respond to the scene. Remember this. Bounty hunters want to be cops, and cops want to be bounty hunters. By the way, my sergeant had that same tattoo. The price reflects our top tier personnel. Ah, top tier personnel. Let's take a look at this scene here. We got what looks like a orange jumpsuit on the ground, a machete, and some jail keys. By the way, keys to prison cells do actually look like that. Oh no, and we got an officer down there in the corner. Luckily, this is just a video game. This reminds me of the one guy that I've seen escape from prison. Have I ever told you that story before? Well, I'll tell you again. It was the job of the better behaved inmates to take the trash out every evening. Escorted by several guards, of course. We had an inmate hide in one of the trash cans. When they took out the trash, he popped out of the trash can, grabbed the female officer's radio, threw it on the ground. Then he shoved her to the ground. The female corrections officer looked at the other two inmates and said, catch him. They looked at each other like, hell no, that's not my job. The male officer came running after this guy, but it was too late. He had already scaled up the fence like Spider-Man. He threw himself up over the razor wire and ripped open his nutsack. Blood everywhere. He took off his jumpsuit covered in nutsack blood and threw it on the ground. He followed the tree line up north and then cut across the highway. We brought out the police dogs, but the only thing that they found was the jumpsuit covered in nutsack blood. We searched all night for this guy, couldn't find him. However, the next day, a citizen called in a suspicious subject. Bloody male subject was wandering around the Mondom Mall in Baltimore City. High on heroin, of course. And the fact that this guy was white didn't help him blend in either. Anyway, somebody had left their car unlocked the night before. He had simply opened the door and slept there overnight. Stole some change out of the center console, got a bus pass, and went down into the city. Found his favorite dealer, 
And yeah, the rest is history. We asked this guy, would, was it worth it? He told us, absolutely, he'd do it again. Yeah, baby. I'll tell you what, I am so glad that owning a rocket propelled grenade is legal here in the United States. You just fill out a form one, do a little welding, and of course, pay a $200 fee. I am confident that citizens will always use their second amendment right to own a rocket propelled grenade responsibly. Proud of you. It's not enough to just tell someone you're proud of them. You gotta give them a high five. Scientifically proven to increase trust and confidence. This even works if you're doing it in the mirror to yourself. You just look in the mirror, give yourself a high five, and say, Proud of you. Oh, no. Yeah, all right, all right. I'm okay with this. Sometimes you can't just put somebody in a cell. You gotta, you gotta help them in there a little bit. You know, give them a bit of a shove. Nothing wrong with that. Just don't throw them on the ground, put them in a chokehold, shove your police baton up their butthole, and call them the N-word. But... Of course, that's totally insane. No police officer would ever actually do that. Right? Oh my God. Don't tell me that a cop actually did that. I know you can't tell, but I'm thrilled to meet you. These police chases remind me of the old days when the policies were a little different. I'm going to tell you a story here. Now, this was like 10 years ago, and I don't remember all the details, so some things could be off a little bit. We had a guy that either didn't come to a full stop at a stop sign or had a brake light out. I can't remember. But anyway, the cops got behind him for a traffic violation, and we chased him for miles all across the Beltway, 695. Finally, he comes to a stop somewhere in Dundalk. Pulls out a gun, the bullet ricochets and hits an officer. Obviously, this guy was already dead, but we didn't know it at the time. The cops lit him the f up. They must have shot him like 200 times. The worst part about it is they had surrounded him in a complete circle. So cops were shooting at this guy and at each other from all directions. It was an absolute nightmare. Ever since then, pursuit policies have been a little different. I actually went to look this incident up the other day and I couldn't find it anywhere on the internet. So I guess this incident is just lost in the sands of time. What a shame. As always, a scary accurate representation of real life. I appreciate your time and attention in watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm Sam Benton and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.